Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebbing. It's a stash in with Stephanie Day where we come out with a brand new back order friendly pattern that's been inspired by this month's fabric collection that we sent to our stash in with Stephanie members. This month we are working with Magic Garden by Josephine Kimberlein for Figo Fabrics. Figo is the modern division of Northcott Fabrics, which you probably know very well. They've been in the quilting business for a very long time. And it is a really fun collection. We featured Josephine Kimberlein before Four, and you guys really enjoyed her wild and bright prints. And this month we are going to be showcasing the color of those more than anything because we're going to be working with 18 karat revisited. So occasionally what I'll do is I'll take one of my 100 plus patterns that I have designed over my career as a quilt pattern designer and shop owner and I will fat quarter fi it. So 18 karat was originally designed to be used with a 10 inch square charm pack, Motocos and layer cakes, that's what they're commonly known in the industry. Um, and that was fun, it was really cool, but a lot of companies aren't doing those so much now because it's kind of expensive and pre-cuts aren't selling the way they once used to back a few years ago. So a lot of companies are saying, nope, we're skipping that, we're not gonna do the 10 inch squares anymore. So what I did was I took the math and I redid it. And this way we're gonna have a lot less waste. On the other one, there's a little bit of waste out of every square that we did. This one we're using every bit of it. It looks fantastic and it, it works for a really scrappy look. So this can also be a great one if you're pulling from your stash. All right, we're gonna talk a little bit about what Stashing with Stephanie is before we take a peek at this month's fabric. If you do not like sitting through the commercial part of these videos, you can go watch a commercial free version of this tutorial on our brand new education website, academy.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Right now, it's just the piecing video that is up for you guys to watch, but in a couple days, there'll be also one that shows you how I quilted this quilt. Um, we've released them a couple of days apart when we have just put them out there, so you guys can take time to digest each one. Um, but there is a cost to that, it's $9.99, and that just helps us continue to bring you new patterns, new content, and all of those good things. If you do get the course, then you do get a discount on the pattern. If you're a member of Stash with Stephanie, check your email because we've sent you a coupon code where you can watch the commercial free version for free. And of course you get the pattern for free as well. All right, now on to what Stash with Stephanie is. This is our subscription club here at Quilt Addicts Anonymous. We came up with it back when we were really struggling as a new quilt shop as a way to be able to bring in fabric one collection a month. Um, and it has grown significantly from that, from the point when my husband was like, hey, do you think you could include a, a new pattern every month in this? And I was kind of like, hold my beer. And dozens and dozens of patterns later, here we are. And it's been a lot of fun to be inspired every single month to come up with a new pattern that goes with the fabric. We have a little bit over 500 members right now. We're down a bit because I know that you know, subscriptions are a thing that often get cut when the economy is down a bit, but we appreciate every single subscriber we have. And if you wanna become one, we have some great deals for you once you join. So when you first join, we send you a coupon code where you can get 12 of our Stash with Stephanie patterns for free as soon as you join. Then for every month after that, for your first six months of membership, we'll send you another coupon code where you can get two additional patterns for free. So that's gonna get you that month's pattern that's brand new that just came out, plus another one that you didn't get in your first 12. Once you've been a member for six months, you have access to every single Stash with Stephanie pattern that is available on our website. It is getting to be close to a $500 value right now. So that is a huge, huge reason to stick around and stay. So you can have unlimited patterns to keep you busy from now until you run out of stash. It, it's a lot of patterns. And then you also get 20% off any additional fabric that you order. So the bundle that we send you um, has 10 fat quarters in it, and we send it to you for $32.49 a month plus shipping. That is about a $40 value. It varies a little bit from month to month because different fabric manufacturers charge different amounts, but you're already saving about 20% straight off the bat with that. 
And then if you get additional fabric later because you like what we did with it and you want to turn your bundle into a quilt kit, we have stuff for you to do that. You can get additional fabric for your backing or maybe you have another project in mind you want to get a couple other things. You never have to get additional fabric but if you choose to you're going to save 20% on that plus any previous Stashing with Stephanie lines that we've come out with. So if you're watching this video and you're like I love this I need this fabric in my life we've already shipped it out to our customers so you are going to want to order a full kit from this but make sure you join first because on that second purchase you'll be able to get it at 20 percent off so that's a great deal for you guys we also get to save on my two fat quarter books that are, had originally stashed with stephanie patterns in them now those patterns are only available in the books fat quarter workshop and fat quarter password quilts plus you know you get to join a really cool facebook group where people share what they're working on and what they've done with the fabric and ask questions it's a really good way to get direct access to me all right, so check all those things out. You can join over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. And if you join by the end of the month, then your first bundle will ship around the 22nd of July. If you do not join until the beginning of July, you're gonna be waiting until about August 22nd, which is my wedding anniversary, to get your first bundle shipment. The reason is, is we ship all the bundles at one time that were paid for in the previous month. That way we know exactly how many to prepare. And also, um, everyone gets the same chance of getting additional fabric because we give everybody a 24 hour head start to get their fabric before we open it up to our non-subscribers. And we do sell out of some prints sometimes. And this is a good way for everyone to get that first dibs all at the same time that we wouldn't be able to do if we shipped it out piecemeal. All right, let's take a look at this month's fabric. Then we're gonna get into the tutorial. So this month we're working with Josephine Kimberlyn Magic Garden. It's really fun. And of course you can't have magic without some stars. So this one is really kind of fun though, how they did it. There's all these little dots in the background and then the star is solid. So it's really cute and there it, you're gonna see this again, but it is really a fun one. We always include 15 fat quarters in our bundles and our quilt kits because it's a really good, nice round number to be able to create a good lap or twin size quilt. Sometimes though, the collections don't have a full 15 in them. This one is a basic from Figo Fabrics. It's called Elements by Gazelle Razivi. She's a very talented designer and she helps run and created the brand Figo very very lovely woman to chat with and this is great because it works really well with the coloring of the rest of them and it works as a good basic this is one of my favorite prints for whatever reason it reminds me of like some sort of crazy rainbow dream it's kind of this paisley looking shape with these rainbow stars coming out of it and the colors are just really fun they're more on, they're not pastel, but they're also not neon. It's just this lovely space in between and it really is a fun print and it looks good cut up in this month's quilt. This one also kind of looks like a rainbow cloud. We're gonna see it in another colorway as well. This one is the pink and then a really dark blue version. But I love how it's also tying together in some of these coral colors as well. It really is a fun one. This print is really fun. It almost looks a little bit like textured acid wash denim um, in pink. So, you know, we're definitely visit revisiting the 90s here and I'm here for it. This is very much a flower power print. We have a nice pink background with some yellow and blue in the center of the flower. It really is fun and it really pops. This is one of the larger scale prints of the collection. If you're looking for a good backing candidate, this is a good one for you because it's got a lot going on. We have big blooms, we have some little blooms, we've got a butterfly and a hummingbird pollinating all the flowers all over. It really is a fun one and it does a good job of tying in all the colors of the collection. Here's our floral print again, this time with a green background. This one is super psychedelic. It combines all the colors of the collection and it looks really amazing in the quilt blocks we're working with this month. Here's that Paisley Star Rainbow again, this time with a blue background. I'm gonna show you these two at the same time because this month we had a box fall off the truck on its way to us. So it's not at Figo's warehouse. It didn't make it to us. It's somewhere in between. And so we had some of this 
And then we ended up substituting with this. So if you were in part of the first part of the bundles to get packed, then you ended up with our blue, lighter blue version. If you end up with a darker version, then you have the darker version of it. Um, this was originally going to be our binding and then I decided we needed to include it in the quilt. Um, so basically you got one of these. We have a lot of this extra. So this would make a really great backing choice if you're looking for something that coordinates and will hide any misstitches that you might have as you're working on it. And also has a bit quite about abundant amount of it left. Here's our star with dot prints again, this time in blue. This is another one of my favorite prints from the collection. This one is a bunch of butterfly wings all together in a mosaic. It's really pretty, it's gorgeous. And even though it's on a large scale with a repeat, it does look good cut up within the strips. And apparently you can't have a magic garden without some mushrooms. So we have a nice rainbow mushroom collection here. And this one also looks really good cut up in the quilt. And of course you cannot have a garden without some creatures who live there. We've got an owl, a bunny, a fox, some other creatures floating around there. The hummingbird and butterfly are there. Now these do get massacred a little bit when we put them together for the quilt that we're putting and using this month. But uh, it looks really good and it almost looks like a basic because you're really only dealing with two colors here. So it really kind of gives the eye a place to rest among all the other busier fabrics. And last but not least, if you order a quilt kit from us or a finishing kit, if you are a member, then you are gonna get this fabric in it. This was a basic that we had in the warehouse. Originally, we were going to use this fabric as our extra, but since we lost the whole box off the truck, uh, this is the one that we are using as our extra instead. It actually works really well. You can see it within a lot of these prints. It's in here, it's in here, it's in here, this one. So it really coordinates really well. Figo does a really good job of maintaining their color from collection to collection. So a lot of times you can mix and match even if you have different designers. This is a really good one to do that with. And this is the one I'm going to be demonstrating the techniques with when we start making our half square triangles right now. So normally with these tutorials, we already cut everything before we get started because we assume you know how to cut. If you don't know how to cut, we have a beginner quilting series that you can watch for free on academy.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. It takes you through everything you need to know to start making a quilt. And there's a specific segment all on cutting. But this one is a little bit different. So for one thing, we gotta talk about fat quarters. So your fat quarter should be 18 inches wide by like 22 inches from selvage to the top. And the selvage bit, a lot of times it has information about what the fabric designer was, but the way you can really tell it is it's got little dots in it um, from where it was held onto the machine rollers. And then the weave of it is different. It, it won't unravel if you wash it or like here you can see that there's little bits coming off. So that's the selvage. And that is, this is the width of the fabric. This is the length of the fabric. So the length should be 18 inches. Now, a lot of times if you buy a pre-cut back quarter bundle, you, they're gonna cut it exactly to 18 inches. And because the fabric often isn't rolled on straight when it is doubled, when it arrives from the mill, it's on a big fabric two roll. So if you ever bought like home deck fabric, from a big box store or something that's on, it comes on those big tubes like that. And then it goes through a machine that doubles it and wraps it around the bolts that you see. And a lot of times when that happens, it gets kind of stretched a little funny. So sometimes if you've got a fat quarter that it, it's 18 inches wide, but it's like not really, it's like crooked. And that is, happens to everybody, it happens to us when we cut. And unfortunately there's nothing that anybody can do about it because it's something that happened when it was doubled, um, either at the mill or some of the fabric companies have machines here in the States that do that um, once it arrives. So the reason why I gave you that really long explanation is that here at Quilt Addicts Anonymous, when you buy a fat quarter from us, if it's one that we have cut in house, which almost all of them are, we cut it at 18 and a half inches for you. That way you for sure are gonna have 18 inches to work with and then when I design my patterns, I design them so we're only ever using 17 and a half inches. That way you're never gonna not have enough fabric as long as you're cutting correctly um, when you get it from us. Cause we don't, we know that we get some newbies here. We don't want you to be frustrated with it. So 
The first thing we're gonna do with this is we're gonna cut a 17 inch square because we're gonna use just about all of this section, but then we're gonna use this top part here for binding. A lot of times when we use scrappy binding, we're cutting across the width of the fabric, but today we're gonna to cut across the length of the fabric. Um, it's technically, it's not gonna stretch out as much um, when you do it that way, but I chose to do it that way purely because it worked out better from a math standpoint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna turn my mat to the side here. So what I have going over here is my salvage is off to my right. My, what would have been my fold of the fabric is off to the left. And then this part here across your length of your fabric, this is your width of your fabric. This is my length of my fabric. That should measure 18 inches. And so I wanna make sure that we're gonna measure that. This one is 18 and a half, because remember we cut them a little bit longer for you guys so that you don't run out of fabric. And then this way, I'm just shy of 22 inches, but I definitely have 21 inches of usable width, which is another number that I don't go over when I'm figuring out pattern math. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm, I wanna cut that 17 inch square. So we're gonna use our mat to measure for that situation. So the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna square up this edge. I wanna have a nice square edge to work with and it'd be good to go there. So what I'm doing, I'm lining my ruler up so that it is parallel to my selvage so that I can keep it kind of with the grain. And I'm just gonna slice off just right above as close to that selvage as I can get so that I can keep as much usable fabric over here as possible. I'm gonna now move it down so that the edge I just cut is even on my one inch line. I just wanna be able to see that so that I can measure and cut off my 17 inch square section here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm pulling down the fabric a little bit and I'm gonna to totally turn it at a 90 degree angle here. So the edge that I just cut is now down here and I'm gonna square off this edge on the right. So I'm lining up the bottom of my ruler, even with the edge that I just cut. And I wanna use as much of this fat quarter as I can. So I'm scooting it as far over to the right as I can and still be able to keep like just a sliver here. And then you can see it gets a little fatter as it goes up. And again, that's because of the way that it's wound on the bolt. Sometimes it can get off a little bit. All right, so now we have two cut edges, this one and this one. So we've got a straight right angle here. I'm gonna put that right into the corner of the mat. And now I can see that I've got the edges even with zero on this side and zero on this side. So I'm gonna turn one more time. That way I'm cutting it away from myself. And now that everything is nice and lined up and square, I can see I've got my 17 inch down here. And if I move my ruler up, I can see my 17 inch line up here. So I'm gonna line my ruler up with both of those lines at the top and the bottom. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut. We're gonna save this piece for a second, but for right now, I'm gonna give it one more turn. So now I've got this edge, I haven't moved at all. I are at zero inches here. This one we just cut at 17 inches down here. So we have 17 from edge to edge here. So now we need to get 17 from edge to edge here. So I'm gonna again, place my ruler on 17. And I'm doing that both at the top of my mat and making sure it's coordinating with the line down here. And once I'm happy, I'm gonna go ahead, cut that in half. Now this part we don't need, that's scrap. Now from here, I'm gonna cut this in half twice. You can actually do this without moving your mat at all. So half of 17 is eight and a half. So I'm lining up my ruler with eight and a half on top and on bottom, I'm gonna give that a cut. I'm gonna rotate it again. And we're gonna line up eight and a half again 
on the top and bottom. I have not moved anything on my mat. So you can, you know, you might have to readjust if you do end up moving something. And now I've cut my four eight and a half inch squares that I'm gonna need from each fat quarter. Now this last part, this is super easy. We're gonna take the piece that we left off to the side and we're gonna cut that into a two and a half inch by 18 inch strip. If it's a little wider or a little shorter than 18 inches, don't worry about trimming that down. This is just gonna be for scrapping binding. So the only measurement that really matters is how wide this is. If it's a little shorter or a little longer in the length, no big deal. Now we have all our squares cut from our fat quarters and we're gonna cut equal amounts of squares from our background. And you're gonna draw a line from corner to corner on the wrong side of your background fabric. When you're doing this, make sure you are drawing right into those corners. I have watched this done enough times in person to know that people follow the line instead of thinking they're gonna adjust themselves. And with this technique, you really wanna be able to get right into the corner of where you're sewing. So that way you have enough left when we're all done. So I'm gonna go ahead and layer these guys right sides together. And I normally am not a, a pinner at this step. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make two at a time half square triangles from squares. And normally I just stack them and go, but this is a bigger square. So I do want to pin. Um, so what I wanna do, I wanna pin where I'm gonna be sewing. So that's gonna be across the top corner and across the bottom corner. Um, one note because the person prepping this at the shop made this mistake. So I want to make sure that you guys all know it as well. Um, if your squares are not the same size at this point, it's, you need to stop and figure out what happened um, because it's, it's not gonna work going forward. Um, what happened with ours is one of the sides for all of them was eight and a half and the other side was like eight and three eighths and there was not enough left by the time we sewed it together in order for it to work. So you need to be as accurate as you can. Um, the other problem that happened was because they weren't the same size, when they may match the corners and pin, this got super stretched out and that's no good. So you wanna make sure that everything matches, everything is the right size, um, or you're gonna have to figure out some solutions further on down the line. But I'm about to show you another te technique that's gonna give you a little bit of wiggle room here. So if you are a teensy bit off, you can try sewing like one together and make sure this is gonna work um, before you go, you know, saying, oh gosh, I just messed the whole thing up. You know, we don't want you to do that. This, this is gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew a scant quarter inch seam. Whenever you are sewing uh, triangles from squares, you want to sew a scant quarter inch seam because it's going to give you more wiggle room when we go to trim them to size later. If you sew a regular quarter inch seam, which is basically one or two needle widths larger than a scant quarter inch seam, then you're gonna be exactly where you need to be. And the math is technically supposed to work but sometimes it doesn't. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our sewing machine up to sew a regular quarter inch seam, and then you just need to move that needle width one position to the right. And that's what gives you that scant quarter inch seam. It's just a little bit smaller, um, but what we end up doing is we're gonna stitch, instead of lining our presser foot up with the side to sew our quarter inch seam, we're gonna pretend that this line that we drew is our side. So we're gonna stitch all the way down one side, then we're gonna flip everything around and we're gonna stitch all the way down the other side. And so by doing that scant quarter inch seam, we're gonna be two needle widths smaller than our standard quarter inch seam, which means our distance between our two stitch lines is gonna be less than half an inch. And so that's gonna be perfect. It's gonna give us enough wiggle room when we cut everything apart to be able to do everything we need to do. Now let's actually do it and I swear it's gonna make more sense. All right, so I've got the quarter inch seam set up. We're gonna push that needle one position over. And now we can take and line up with that point, even with the edge, and then the line is even with the edge of our presser foot as well. And we're just gonna stitch down. Another really important thing of this step is, like if I just let this go, I'm sewing hands-free here, the, 
the feed dogs underneath are what is pulling this down. You do not want to be tugging, either pulling this way or tugging this way. That will stretch your bias seam a lot of whack and you're going to have a problem. All right, I've come down to my second pin, so I'm going to remove that. And then what I do is I just put my finger to the side and that helps me guide it and maintain that scant quarter inch seam accurately throughout the entire thing. Now, if you're doing this as a big chain, you can feed the next one through and do all of one side at a time. Um, that's totally fine. And then you can just turn it around and keep on going right down the other side. Now this is a really good place to double check and make sure you're good to go. So if you've never done this technique before, just do one, make sure it's fine, and then move on and everything's fine from there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check and I'm gonna make sure that I am exactly at half an inch in between my steam lines or less. So this is perfect. I've got it, the edge lined up with my first seam line and then the other one is between 3 8 of an inch and half an inch. That's perfect. You don't want it to be less than 3 8 of an inch. That it's going to leave your seam too skinny. More than is a problem. You also want to make sure that everything is lying nice and flat. You have good tension. There's no waving or pulling or puckering here. This is all looking fantastic. Um, if you see it pulling, if you see it kind of pulling in other directions or it looks like this is all stretched out, that means that you messed up the bias a little bit. You were tugging on a little bit. Maybe you need to adjust your sewing machine tension. There's lots of issues that could be going on here. And if you need more help diagnosing it, we have an entire lesson just on doing half square triangles from squares in our triangle masterclass, which you can also take for free on academy.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. So go check that out if you need more help diagnosing what went wrong where in this step. But as long as everything looks flat, you are between three eighths of an inch and a half an inch, then we are good to go ahead and line our ruler up on the line that we drew and slice down the center. Now, when you do this, we already have the accuracy from sewing on either side of that line, but you want to make sure that you don't get your seams too skinny when you cut that apart. You don't have to be right on the line, but too skinny is a problem too, because then when you go to use the quilt or even just put it on the long arm, that seam is kind of weaker and it can pop open over time or even just loading it on the long arm. So just make sure that, you know, you're not less than an eighth of an inch when you do your seam allowance there. So now we're going to press open our half square triangle. What we're gonna do is we're going to open that seam with our fingertips and I like to keep three or four down to sort of pre-press open that seam. And then I just slide down it with the tip of that iron. The reason why I do this and press the seams open is because it makes for a much flatter join which is in much pointier points, which is gonna be fabulous for the quilt that we're working on here. It's gonna be a breeze to quilt and just a whole lot easier to work with. And I'm also a long armor and I can tell you that there are no problems with doing this on your long arm and quilting right up and down that seam. I also like to press from the front side just to make sure everything is nice and flat. Now we're gonna trim this up and cut our sections. So we are good to go. I'm also gonna do this with the other one so I can show you the different ways we're gonna cut to get ready for our block. Now it's time to trim our half square triangle to size. And if you've done everything as I've explained so far, you should have a little bit left on all four sides to trim down. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to arrange my 45 degree line going right up and down that seam. If you have it off, then obviously this is an extreme example, but this is never gonna look right because our 45 degree line is nowhere near our seam. So our corner is not gonna go, or our seam is not gonna meet right in the corner the way it's supposed to. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that is good to go. From there, I wanna make sure I've got a little bit past the measurement I need to trim to, which in this case is eight inches, and a little bit on the sides as well. Once I'm happy with everything, I put my whole palm down on the ruler and I find it doesn't move when I do that. And I have my pinky to the left, which also kind of helps stabilize everything. Now I'm gonna cut to the right and on top. If you're a lefty, it's gonna be backwards for you. You're still gonna do the top, but you're gonna cut your left first and arrange it different. So now we can see our seam is going right out into that corner. It looks great. 
So we're gonna flip it 180 degrees so that our cut edges are now on our left and our bottom if you're right-handed. Now we're going to go ahead and again, we're gonna line up that 45 degree line first. That is the most important line. Second most important is gonna be making sure your eight inches is right on the edges that we've already cut. And then we're gonna trim her down. And I can tell that this blade needs trimming because it's kind of pushing. You can see on this one a little bit, it didn't go straight to the curve because the blade actually pushed the fabric out of the way. So it's time to replace this rotary cutter blade um, before I do too much more with it because it's not good for trimming anymore. Now from here, we're going to arrange our half square triangles so that they are split in half. I like to make sure that I have equal amounts of each fabric stacked on top of each other and we want them facing in opposite directions. That's what's gonna help us create both sides of the block that we're putting together in a little bit. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm going to cut these into two inch by eight inch strips. It's gonna do four equal segments that are going vertically across. And that's what's gonna create the segments for our block labeled A through H. And what I like to do is kind of move them off to the side as I'm working on them. That way I can line up the two inch mark with the edge that I just cut. And again, you wanna be really careful when you do this because if you get off, we just trim this to exactly eight inches. So if you get off, that means that your last strip is gonna to be too skinny. So just be really careful as you're going through. So this is what you should have right now. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And we've labeled these for you in your pattern that you're following along with. Again, it's called 18 Karat Revisited. You can get it at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Now the pattern is gonna tell you what order we need to rearrange these into. I've already done that with a bunch of different fabrics. So you can see what it looks like and we're gonna start sewing this block together. All right, so I've switched up my order. You can see now that it makes this really cool, spiky design. It's really fun. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew these into sets of two. So these are gonna go together, these are gonna go together, these and these. I'm gonna do that all the way up down, press it, and then we're gonna do it in sets of four, press it, and then finally join the block and press it. Super easy because we do not have any points that need to match until we hit right here. So we're gonna go ahead and let you guys watch me do that. And then we are going to show off this final block. It's super easy. It does take a little bit of time to get to this point, um, but it really is not that hard considering all the different shapes that we have here. We're getting all of these from a really simple half square triangle. So it is really a fun block that just reimagines the way that you use that half square triangle. So let's get sewing them into twosies. One thing to note here, make sure you move your sewing machine back to a regular quarter inch stitch for this. And I typically don't pin um, because I've done this a lot. I've, I've been sewing for a very, very long time. Um, but if you feel like you need to pin in order to make these points match at the top and bottom, please do. It's worth taking the extra time to have really good results in the end. So what I do is once I have the fabrics on top, what I'm gonna do is just match up those corners and I just put one finger on top there and then one finger in the middle. That was, are both good places to pin. Um, but what I do is I kind of just hold it in place with my fingers and I get to skip that step. But again, I've been sewing a really long time. So totally fine if you feel more comfortable pinning this step. We're gonna repeat and get all these sewn into sets of two. Now we're gonna take our sets of two and we're gonna press those open as well. Whenever you get to these seams, it's nice to lift the iron up and then set it back down that we don't accidentally press something going in the wrong direction. It's really easy to do with those diagonal seams. Once I've done the back side, I'm also gonna do the front and work my way down. But you can see how fabulous this looks. We've got the really gorgeous point there. 
It's really pretty, it's really well defined, and it's incredibly flat. So I'm gonna be able to quilt right into that point without worrying about my needle getting stuck or having my machine blow a fuse because it's been stuck for too long. I can just do whatever I want with the quilting and let me tell you, I do. So stay tuned for that video once I get this one done. All right, we've got our twosies pressed out. Now it's time to turn them into sets of four. You need to be extra careful at this step, do a lot of lifting and pressing. That way we're not accidentally pressing any of these seams going the wrong way. But again, we're gonna press these open as well because it just leads to really fabulous results. All right, we have our last seam to press and this is the first one that I'm gonna pin. I wanna make sure that these seams meet really well in the middle so that everything looks absolutely fantastic. So I'm gonna start by flipping those right sides together. And now we can see that our seams are meeting together on the diagonal. So we should be able to place them so that they are right on top of each other. And then I'm gonna put a pin in in the right side of that seam allowance and I'm following the diagonal of that seam. I'm not gonna worry about going straight in. I wanna keep it like on the seam there. Now, if you also wanna pin at the bottom and the top, feel free to do that. These should be matching. They should, the angle should match at the same part. If they don't, just, you know, make it work and it'll be okay. I don't think they did the very first time that I made this quilt, um, but they do now. So just give it time and you'll get there. So when I'm sewing, what I like to do is stitch right up as close to that pin as I can. And then I stop with my needle down in the first half of that seam allowance, because then that needle is gonna kind of act like a pin. So when I remove this one, I don't have to worry that all my hard work to pin in place is going to be for nothing and that it's gonna come apart. From there, I just make sure everything is lined up. And once my edges are on my throwing machine, sewing machine throat, then I line up my corners and continue the rest of the way. One way to keep a quarter inch seam really well is once you can't grab a hold here anymore, you just kind of hold your third finger or your middle finger right on the side of that and that can help you maintain your quarter inch stitch evenly throughout your entire seam. All right, we have our last seam to press open. Again, lots of lifting and pressing here so that we don't accidentally undo any of our hard work pressing everything nice and open and flat. I've got one final step that I do on all my blocks when they're finished. And I don't like to put steam in my iron because every time I do it, it eventually kicks out nasty gunk. So what I use instead is a spray mister. We have them on our website, shop.quiltedexnomis.com. What it does is it turns water into a fine aerosol mist. So if you've ever used a regular spray bottle and it just leaves like chunks of water on your quilt, this doesn't do it. It actually was originally developed for hairstylists, but the quilters made it their own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go over that with my iron. I'm gonna do one half of the block first so you can see how good this looks when that's all done. So you can see visibly, like this is popping up some still. This one is flat as flat can be and those points look fabulous. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of it and then it is ready for assembly. Now make sure when you're doing this that you're keeping an eye on your pattern because there are going to be some blocks that are offset. So some of these are gonna remain in halves. You're not gonna put all of them together to make the blocks. Some of them are gonna remain in two parts um, for the top and bottom of about half of the rows. So definitely check that out. It tells you what to do in your pattern. But from here, it's super easy. We're just gonna put it together. I recommend also pinning where the little triangles meet each other and you will be good to go and you're gonna have a fabulous quilt when you are all done. Thanks so much for following along with this month's tutorial for 18 Care Revisited, where we took one of my classic patterns and reimagined it for back quarters. The blocks are a little smaller, but it really looks gorgeous. It's a great way of showing off all the prints. And because even though these do have a fairly large scale to some of them, they still look really good with that skinnier strip as well. I mean, this was one of the bigger ones, both of these, and they look good. The mushrooms look good in it, all of these. They all look fabulous and they all coordinate really well with each other. And the finished quilt looks fabulous as well. Now, if you like this and you're like, I need this quilt and you wanna join Stashing with Stephanie, make sure you join first. 
and then in your second transaction, purchase the quilt kit for it. We've already shipped this fabric out to our members. You're not gonna get it in your first bundle. You're gonna get something else. So you want to make sure that you get that kit and you can get 20% off if you sign up for Sash with Stephanie first and then get your kit on the second purchase. You'll also then get access to 12 patterns that you can download for free from our Stash with Stephanie collection two more patterns every month after that so you've been a member for six months and then you get access to them all and it's nearly a 500 dollars value right now so it's a very good deal and a great reason to stay you also are going to get 20 percent off your bundles basically stashing with stephanie uh, bundles would cost about 40 bucks if you were buying them but we're going to ship it to you each month for 32.49 plus shipping and then you can save 20% on any additional fabric you like. So for example, this month's members got 10 fabrics in their bundle. And then if they like this fabric, then what they can do is they can go and buy what we call a finishing kit, which includes the fat quarters that they need to finish the quilt at six this month and their background in binding. So you've got everything to do the quilt top and the binding. And then if you wanna purchase extras, like say you wanna make it bigger, you wanna do a border, or you want backing fabric that coordinates, you can do all that and it's all 20% off. Plus you get a discount exclusively on my two Fat Quarter books, Fat Quarter Patchwork Quilts and Fat Quarter Workshop. So it's a great deal to join and you get the commercial free version of this video over at academy.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. So thanks so much for following along. Go check out Stash with Stephanie. We'd love to have you over there. And until next time, happy quilting.